Hi, how are you? So in today's video, we're gonna talk about neutering. Stay tuned. As you can see behind me, caramel is separated from the other rats at the moment. This is not a permanent home solution. This would never be big enough for that. But he just had surgery and I needed a cage that was not so tall for him to be in so he wouldn't climb too much because he is an extremely hyper guy. And as you can see, he's only three days out of surgery and already climbing and hopping around like crazy. So can you imagine if he had a full sized cage, how much movement he would be doing and it would not be good. Um, Mr. Caramel has been giving us issues for a little while. Um, the breeder informed me that his dad had had a couple of issues. And so I knew there was a possibility that something could pop up with him and with Mr. Crackers. Um, but we knew that ahead of time. So I had time to prepare and save funds and knew that it would likely be hormonal if it did pop up. And sure enough, right around six months, he started getting really testy with the other rats. And I noticed that he was constantly trying to hump them, he was constantly marking things in our house when he was playing. Um, I'll try to find a video clip because I had one, but I'm not sure what happened to it. But if there was anything on the floor during free roam, he would walk over it and pee on it. And then if one of the other rats did the same, he would have to come back and pee on it. He was not doing marking with his front feet yet. And that's a good thing in my opinion, because it seems like once they get to that point, it's really bad. Um, but he would also just randomly like go up to Marshmallow or Sprinkles and pounce at them. And it wasn't in play. This was definitely trying to establish some sort of dominant type behavior. And when this would happen, rather than calming down, he would get really puffy, he'd get irritated, they'd kick his butt, put him in his place, and then he'd be like, well, this isn't okay, come at me. And he'd go back after him, and he'd go back after him. And it would be like five or 10 minutes of every free room of him following them around, all puffy, kind of, I'm so big and scary, Leave, do what I want type of behavior. And it escalated to the point that Marshmallow wound up, at one point they got into a squabble, and Marshmallow got a nick in his ear, um, a little bite. And I thought, well, ears are thin. I'll let it go this time. And then it happened again about a month and a half later, I think. And Marshmallow's ear got bit really badly. Thankfully, it wasn't permanently damaged. It's healed completely now. You can't even see where it happened. But I just decided that was it and I wasn't gonna let it go any further than that. And it was clear also that he was tense all the time. Like if you'd pick him up, he'd stiffen and get real frozen. And he'd let you pick him up. He has never tried to bite near the kids. Never has he attacked even, it's so weird. He never go in after crackers. It was always marshmallow and sprinkles. Um, so I just decided for the sake of everybody, we would get him neutered. And so he is recovering in his cage. He's doing extremely well. And um, yeah, when you see this video, hopefully he will have gone back in with the other rats. Um, but for now, he is currently separated. And you will get regular updates in this video. You'll get to see from like the day we drop him off, picking him up, and his recovery process. Because I thought that might be helpful for some of you to kind of see what we're going through, how we're dealing with it, that sort of thing. So yeah, this is, how we are right now. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I will look different because it will be the future for me, but it will just be a short time frame for you. And yeah, you'll get to see the end result. Bye for now. This is a soft blanket. And then I've got his food in a bowl. I normally scatter feed, but I wanted it to be really easy for him to find when he's drunk on meds. We've got a litter box tray in the back. Um, I didn't want a lot of that bedding, so I've just got it in the litter tray. And then we've got a couple of chew toys. 
I'm probably gonna move that one over here. And then his water bottle will go on the door. And I'm hanging it kind of low because once again, I don't know how drunk he's gonna be. So we just dropped Caramel off at the vet for his neuter. It is pretty early in the morning. Well, I guess it's not early for some of you. It's early for us since we tend to be late risers, but they will then call me when it's time to come pick him up. For you, this will be in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Well, their brother's at the vet. They're hanging out with Ian. Hi, Sprinkles. So we just picked Caramel up from the vet. He's doing pretty good. He's already had one dose of pain medicine, but he's doing some owie stretches. So when we get home, we're gonna give him a little something. Ah. Um, he's ready to be home though, poor little guy. Yeah, he probably hurts. There he is. Poor Caramel. What you doing, BB? Looking. Caramel. What'd you pick? Oh yeah. Hi. How are you? The home. You mean to the How are you doing? It's like, I don't know what they did to me and I'm not sure I liked it. He has dumped all of his food out. He's dumped his litter. That's fine though. Probably because he got scared. I'm sure. And he was climbing in it and it's not well supported. So they gave him some, looks like Missouri pellets, which is fine. Looks like he nibbled them a little. I took his water bottle off because I didn't want it to make a mess in the car. So we're gonna head home. So we just got home. We're gonna look him over. He's doing pretty good. He says, I smell my brothers. Hi. Hi, buddy. Come here. Let's put you out gently. And let's look at you over. Okay, good. So he looks pretty good. You can tell he's a little sore. Can you see him in the video? He's got... Where's his stitches? Right there. Ah. Let's just they won't hurt him. He'll be okay. Mostly he wants to go back in the cage with his brothers. I want to see him. I'm a little worried about that, though, because there's no shelf. Could you hold him for a few minutes? That's what I would love to do. All right. So the last thing I'm going to do is set up a hospital cage. I was going to use the carrier, but I can see that that's going to be a problem. Caramel completely knocked over his litter box because it couldn't latch properly. So we're going to do a small hamster cage because I don't want him climbing a whole lot. I just kind of want him to be kind of still, but also still have a few things to do because he's also my most like busy rat. So this is hard for him. So I'm thinking we put a hide and comfortable flooring. Um, I've been told to stay off of shavings for a couple of days, so I'm gonna do that. Um, I've heard this from many, many people and vets. Um, I didn't think to ask mine, honestly. And I asked online and my question got skipped over, but that's okay. Um, you'd think after having two surgeries that I would know, but this is still kind of new territory. So the plan is fabric bedding for a day or two. I have enough to do that from when my previous rats had to be on fleece. And then I'm hoping after that he will be recovered enough that he can go in the big cage because I'm getting ready to clean that too. I'll give a picture of that at the end. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got hide on the ground level, soft, but it's not catchy. It's not fraying um, flooring. It's actually a bathroom rug, so it should be absorbent too. He's got some chew toys, one in the back, one there, hide, floor, food, litter box, and we've got toilet paper to unroll for enrichment. So once I put the water bottle on, I think it's good to go. So that's what we're gonna do. He's eating some of his food. He had buried his food bowl in the blanket. So he's very happy to have his food back. And he's got his water. Don't climb up there, please. I didn't have a better hide to put in. I mean, he's doing pretty good though. So I guess if he's wanting to, it's okay as long as he's leaving his sutures alone. Keep an eye on him overnight. Make sure he's okay, but he seems to be doing well. 
The toilet paper was a good call because Caramel is very busy pulling it into his hiding space. Aren't you? Are you nesting? You're hurting a little bit. You're a little teensy squinty. Yeah, you're hurting just a little. Baby. I saw we, you're on medicine. Yeah, that is an owie stretch. He's saying, I hurt, I don't feel good. Oh no, buddy. I can't give you any more yet though, I'm sorry. This is day two, so we're just doing some observations. He's not as squinty today. Hi, Caramel, you're so cute. He's made quite a nest in his little tree trunk. I'm sorry we had to neuter you, but you were just too grumpy. I'm sorry. You'll be a much happier rat once you heal up. You my good boy. No banana bread on me. He's cleaning. But he's otherwise seems to be leaving the staples alone, so that's good. Like right there. He cleaned everything, but he left it alone. The little foot. So that's good. That's a good boy. He's being so good. I had one, I think, who pulled a staple out every single day until it was time to take him in. And literally there was like two staples left when we took him in. Yeah. So he's still a little squinty, but he only just got medicine, so he's probably a little sore. Yeah, seepy baby. And his nose also is a little more, yeah, still a sore. Oh, owie stretches, I know. The medicines will help you. If you look, he's only a little squint. Well, he's super squinty right now. He did just stretch too, though. That probably hurt poor buddy. Your poor buddy. Yeah. Angry. Are you angry? You're grumpy. Because you don't feel good. I don't know why, but he really wants to be on top of the tree trunk. That's all for around. I'm cleaning out Caramel's cage and these are some nuts the kids gave him. And look, he actually did manage to get into the almonds. So that's pretty impressive. Looks like he's working on this one. Don't think he figured out the hazelnuts, although they may have tried a little bit. So yeah, I think we'll keep those for later. I'm always so impressed that they can get into stuff. I mean, look at that. That's a piece of the shell. No, actually, that's a cornflake. Never mind. Also, let me show you his nest. He put that inside of this. So impressive. What are you doing? You're so loud. What are you doing? He doesn't know. He's playing in here right now. He's running around, ratting. Letting him play somewhere for a little bit. That's the goal. Get him some exercise. Well, he does his T-Rex impression. Maybe he's a kangaroo. There's no way to tell. Are you a kangaroo? Hmm? Play for a little bit. All right, cage is all set up. And look, it matches everybody else. I was considering taking this out and putting a hammock in, but really low. Maybe I'll do that if I have a flat one, but I don't think I have a flat one clean that'll fit right now. So, hmm, something to think about. Maybe tomorrow. And I salvaged his nest. Uh, it wasn't actually wet, it's very dry. He has clearly been using the bathroom somewhere over here in the cage, so I saved his nest. I will give him another roll of toilet paper in just a little bit though. This is day six for Caramel's um, healing. As you can see, he's doing very well. He actually hasn't had pain medicine um, in about 24 hours now. And um, 
Yesterday, he only had one dose. I'm not certain he actually even, actually, no, he didn't have it yesterday either. The day before yesterday, he only had one dose. But here's what he's looking like right now. No swelling, no redness. You can see he's done pretty good. He's left all but one staple in since the beginning, because he's a good boy. And we're gonna let him play in his bin cage and see how he feels. Hi, yeah, he's your sweetheart. He's still very angry at me for this, for his neuter, and he's pouting, because he's all by himself. He has nobody to play with, but he just wasn't being very nice. We're upgrading Caramel to a regular cage. This is a bin cage big enough for two. We got a big hammock. I moved his chew toys, shower ring. Um, actually, these are this is a bangle ring net, and it actually fits really good in here. I've added a feather boa for him to tear up because I wanted to make sure that he had some more enrichment and a new roll of toilet paper. So then I'll put his water bottle and scatter some food, and he'll be set. All right, I've moved a bunch of stuff around. Moved him from up there to over here by my sewing machines in the corner. So he's kind of out of the way in his own space. This is fairly sturdy. It's not, it's a little wobbly because the rug's not even, but it's not going to tip over and fall off or anything. So I think that's where he's going to be. Where he's going to be, what do you think? What does you think, Caramel? Do you like having a bigger space? You seem like you do. He seems less depressed and excited. So hopefully he will be a happy boy. What do you think? on me. Yes, you are. Not wanting to play. Take this back. And see how you got a little puppy who is not enjoying that at all. Now you're gonna lick me? Don't pee on me again. Don't do it. 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 A little bit puffy. See right around there. He does want to play. He does. He keeps popcorning. He's just still just a little bit more hormonal than I like. But he calmed down really fast. <laughs> Fix that, I saw we. You don't want to play tickles? What does you want? What does you want? A chase. He's gonna get me. He's gonna get me. Look at him. A little crazy again. And I think that's part of the reason. The hormones just, they're not gone yet. It's only been 10 days. Today is 10 days. And it takes about two weeks for them to go away completely. Come here. So we just have to be aware that it may take a little longer. I don't like leaving him separated, but I really want to give him the best chance of reintro. So some scratches. Oh, is that the spot? Oh, is that the spot? So we'll just have to see. Okay, so this is tomorrow will be week three. And I just thought I'd show you he's doing very well. We have one more week to go before we can do 
three intros, which um, I'm not sure if I will show you how he's healed by then because probably won't change much from this video clip, but um, he should be cleared for that and ready to go for reintros next week. So he's doing very well. I'll show you how we're doing. If he will cooperate, go up on my shoulder. Good boy. He doesn't really like me messing with his tail, understandably. He's also very hyper because he hasn't had a lot of playtime today. All he has had is cuddles and he wants to get down and play, doesn't you? Yeah. But he's doing good. Um, you can't even see where the sutures were at this point. I'm not sure if he'll cooperate with me this way, so let's try this. So he's healing up really nice. Oh, I got you. I'm not dropping you. You okay? His fur is mostly started to grow back. Um, he doesn't really have any <laughs> incision marks or anything, but it's starting to grow back already. You can see that. And um, probably in a month or so, it should be completely back. So yeah, he's doing good. He's getting a little chunky because he's all by himself with nothing to play with. Or so he thinks. He has lots of enrichment, but he has always been a rat that enjoys being out of the cage. And because of that, he just doesn't really enjoy being by himself at all. So we're trying to keep him occupied, but this is exactly why rats should not be by themselves. I know, because they just get so, so lonely and it's pitiful. Look at him, he's so pitiful. He just wants down, he wants to do. So, yep, he's gonna be very happy when he gets to see his cage mates again, but and they're actually staring at me from across the room. Like, why can't we come out? So yeah, this is where we're at right now. Bye. So suffice it to say, I'm going to split this into two videos and I'm going to have this one just be the neutering and recovery process. The second video will come out maybe next week and it's going to be covering the re-intro process. The main reason is if I put them both in here, this video is going to be like 30 minutes long and I just find that people don't watch my videos when they're that long and that actually hurts my channel. So I'm going to split them up. That way, if you don't want to watch all of it, you can just not watch the video at all the next time. But here's some clips showing how intros went. We actually did four sessions in the playpen and it was such a big difference. I can't even explain. Like I'm hoping the pictures will kind of show, but if not, definitely watch that other video that'll be coming out. Um, the first intro session, there was some squeaking and he was kind of like, Caramel kind of would turn away, but there was no fighting at all in any intros whatsoever. Um, they, I was really dumb and tried to put them right away into the cage and hadn't deep cleaned it and that was a stupid idea and there was a fight then, but nobody was hurt. So I separated everybody out that day split them up, let them all calm down. And then I did another playpen session and that went even better than the first time. And so I did that the next few days and then deep cleaned the cage on my regular deep clean day, which is usually Wednesdays lately. I don't know why, that's just when it's turned out to be. And put everybody in there after they'd been in the playpen for a good 45 minutes or so. And they really didn't have any problems. Um, Marshy flipped and pinned him and did that a couple of times in both the playpen and in the cage. And then um, I also had the cage set up a specific way so there wasn't very much in it. I didn't do my usual small space intros because I just didn't feel it was needed this time around. I just went really slow with adding stuff in the cage and that worked out great. So the cage was set up with just two hammocks kind of in the middle so they could snuggle in it if they wanted to but they didn't have to and some chew toys. And then the next day, I added a mailbox toy that you've probably seen in some of my cage setup videos, but there's a picture of that. And then um, the next day or the day after, I honestly don't remember. I think I also added, um, I added some other stuff and rearranged the layout a little bit. And oh, on mailbox toy day, I also added a roll of toilet paper. So that's how all that went. and. They've had no issues since then. Um, 
Marshy has been a little bit like making sure that Caramel knows he's dominant. And it took him a couple of days, but Caramel has actually let them groom him. They've all gotten along, they play, they snuggle together, and you can tell he's just so much happier. So hopefully these pictures show that, and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, I'd love to know why in the comments below. Um, if you've ever needed to neuter your rat, I'd love to know about that. Have you considered it? And if so, why did you choose to do so or not to do so? Do you have any questions about this that I maybe didn't cover? I hope I explained things. I feel like sometimes I explain things too much and I try to edit it out, but it just doesn't always happen. So I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you'll stick around next week and come see the next video with the actual intro process. Don't forget to subscribe if you would like to know when that video goes up or when I post things about the random stuff that we get up to that is our miscellaneous mischief. Bye for now.